104.5, the Glock. 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 Glock morning, everybody, and welcome back to Glock Talk Radio, the only talk that matters about the only gun you should ever need or want. Let's get to our first caller of the day. Said your name was uh, Glock Killa? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Your days in the limelight are coming to an end. The sun will set on Glock. On this uncontested empire, you've had it so easy until now. Beware the Slavic Prince. He will be your demise. Slavic Prince? What the hell is that supposed to mean? (laughs) You'll see. Ever since Gaston Glock submitted his design for the Austrian government sidearm race, the firearm industry was destined for a massive overhaul. The Walther P38 had been a trusty pistol since its entrance into service in 1940, but by the 80s, it was long in the tooth. Prior to that, Gaston had made knives, curtain rods, not guns. Did he poop a lot? I said, did he poop a lot? Uh, I don't understand where you're going with this. Because your audience is going to have to poop a lot to be able to finish this video, okay? Move it along. This is a comparison video. This, move it along. Getting ahead of myself. I'm Caleb, and you're watching TGC. Not every good Glock competitor is a Glock clone. In fact, some seem to think that they've improved on the formula and gone BGS, beyond Glock space. Some say if you stare into the void, it changes you, strips you of everything that makes you human, like loving Glocks. The A-Rex Delta Generation 2 is one of the newest young and hopeful challengers hoping to take on the king and it has a lot going for it too. It's vastly more modern, packed to the gills with features, and it's built by a skilled and adept tooling company whose self-made tooling is so good that they make tooling for other toolers. So can the Delta walk the talk, or will it stumble before the Glock? Can the A-Rex prove itself a contender, or will Gaston slap the shit out of this pretender? Can the Slavic Splendor introduce- The, uh, John just texted us, and he says that you need to move it along. Um, so maybe we should roll sponsors? Just get something redeeming out there for a little bit. Something pleasing to the Lord, perhaps. Uh, maybe there's a Chick-fil-A sponsorship or a Stephen Curtis Chapman album that's about to be unlikely. You know what I hate? When big tech companies try to stop me from running my online gun business. They're always taking me down or cutting off my payment processing. Oh, and not to mention that every John. time I turn around, I have to pay John. for a plug-in John. just John. to do something John. simple. Make Ready Arms doesn't do any of that crap. They are the most customizable, gun-friendly e-commerce around. They have 18 templates to choose from for your website, and the other guys, you're stuck with one. And then on top of that, you get hundreds of plugins included in the plans, and they keep adding them at no additional cost to you. They have unparalleled automation and customization. You can finally integrate that FFL finder you've been wanting to do and link straight to the biggest distributors around to have a complete start to finish gun-friendly e-commerce solution. The peace of mind that big tech isn't gonna take you down at any second is also unparalleled. To get 10% off your first month, go over to makereadyarms.com and use our code TGC10. Okay, so what are we working with? First up, the Glock 19, one of the best-selling, most ubiquitous, most recognizable handguns in the world. This is specifically the Generation 5 MOS, or Modular Optic System model, and the A-Rex Delta. Not one of the best-selling handguns in the world, made in a town I cannot pronounce, stranger to many. This is the Generation 2 M. Before we continue, full disclosure, I've done several videos on the A-Rex lineup on my channel, 12 Spies, check it out. And Global Ordnance, the importer of A-Rex and Grand Power, has sent me a lot of free stuff, including firearms, ammo, accessories. I did a video for their military division on the Scorpion mobile mortar system. Glock, on the other hand, doesn't know who I am. And it never will at this rate. And it hasn't sent me any free stuff. So by unanimous decision and virtue of free shit, the winner is the A-Rex Delta. <laughs> I knew we could do it. I knew we could do it. Oh, I can. Free shit's gonna be coming my way. Oh, John's gone. What's up, buddy? What in the fuck? 
are you doing? You are ruining this Thanks, show. Uh, I don't know it's what fine. is wrong with you, but your brain stopped working. Yeah, I just I thought we could do something a little faster, you know, just sleek. No, this isn't sleek. I'm going to scoop your eyes out with a spoon. Okay. Yeah, this is yeah we'll, we'll change that. You uh, are oh, okay. I love you. Yeah, he doesn't always say it back. So, ha, where were we? <laughs> These two guys. <laughs> So at a glance, the Glock and the A-Rex are about as similar as a bread van and an F-117 Nighthawk. But on paper, this comparison is a lot closer than you may imagine. And yes, it's pronounced R-Rex. But I'm from the Midwest, and I'm lazy. Plus, America, right? <laughs> so you're saying that geography, sloth, and nationalism are your reasons for deliberate mispronunciation of an imported brand? Well, with a foreign the policy like that, you should be Secretary of State. <laughs> okay. Ow! Oh, I ugly laughed on that one. Oh. They're both compact, double-stack, striker-fired, polymer-framed handguns with hammer-forged four-inch barrels. They're within a tenth of an inch in height and length, have flush-fitting 15-round capacities, and nearly identical takedown levers. The A-Rex has an edge in weight and width, three ounces lighter and roughly 12% thinner than the 19. Both are optic ready and both will fit, and I say that with an asterisk, in Glock holsters, though you should definitely do your research before stuffing your Delta in a slot you're unsure of. Do you wanna take a bite of that one? The Lord detests. Cool. Grading will be done on five categories. User experience, features, shooting impressions, EDC, and cost. So here we go. Hands down, one of the best aspects about Glock ownership is that it dominates the market in availability and aftermarket support. They're incredibly easy to find and try out, and the wealth of triggers, grips, slides, magazines, barrels, holsters, you name it, is overwhelming, and almost unmatched by any other gun except for maybe the AR-15. And honestly, I don't know which one has more. Tell me in the comments below, I know you will anyway. It also doesn't hurt that they're extremely popular in law enforcement, leading to tons of duty, service-style gear availability. If you buy one of these, you should have no problem finding what you need and customizing it to your heart's desire. The Delta, on the other hand, is still relatively new, suffering a 30-year market deficit to the Glock. Finding one in store will require more effort, and the likelihood that you can shoot one is slim. Some Glock holsters work, as I said earlier, but I wouldn't go trusting any. Personally, I have ones from a &R Design and Battle Gnome Solutions, and both are great quality, and I would definitely recommend them. Unfortunately, there aren't a ton of other brands offering them, and aftermarket barrels, triggers, custom frames, etc., they're not existent at this time. You can get an extended release, and there's some cross compatibility with sites. Print Shoot Repeat showed off a rather excellent 3D printed grip with a custom texture that looked really good, and I'm happy to report that the fire control group is individually serialized, so you can drop them into different frames. So you can take the slide off this M Tactical and put it on an L frame if you want to do a flush comp setup. Unfortunately for the Delta, this just doesn't come anywhere close, and the Glock takes it by a mile. The Glock 19 may look largely unchanged since its inception, but they boast perfection as their constant pursuit. So how perfect is it? The controls are simple and very easy to manipulate. The mag release is very easy to reach and to press, and is positive. It's right-hand specific, but can be swapped with minimal effort. The slide stop release is ambidextrous, well-placed, and easy to use. Gripping the slide is made easier by the addition of forward serrations, and they're pretty grippy. Up front, we have an accessory rail with a single slot, and up top, we have an optic mounting system and a chamber indicator. The position of the Glock trigger can also tell you if it's cocked, charged, or not, and there's a joke in there just dying to get out, but it's almost too easy, so I'll let it pass. Oh, so now you have some standards. Would've loved to see some of those in the first half of the video. The grip is satisfying and very comfortable in my hands, and their traditional stippling is adequate. The magwell is flared on the Gen 5s and provides easy insertion. Safety-wise, Glock boasts three different systems in place. A trigger safety, a firing pin safety, and a drop safety. All ensure that the Glock is about as safe a handgun as you can get without a manual safety to engage. The A-Rex's looks aren't just for flair and point to a wealth of features. The controls are fully ambidextrous, including the mag release, which is very positive on depression, though stiff at first. These guns definitely need more attention when you first get them out of the box, but after a decent amount of dry firing and mag manipulation, it's an easy to use system. Serrations are not just cool looking, but direction specific and provide a surprising amount of bite, especially the forward ones, more than the Glock. The accessory rail has more slots, not sure how that really plays out, 
and there's an optic cut up top. The grip is more textured than the Glock and provides nice touch points around the frame, like in front of the trigger guard. The magwell is even more flared and makes mag insertion a breeze. Safety-wise, the A-Rex also touts a three-safety system, including a trigger safety, a sear safety, and what they call a striker double-action system, where the spring is only partially compressed when a round is chambered. The act of pulling the trigger both compresses the spring and then releases it. Hard to say if this system is more effective than Glock's firing pin blocker, so let's just say that they're both pretty safe for a striker fired gun without a safety. However, the A-Rex also features a striker indicator on the back, which will show you if the gun is cocked and protrudes as the gun's double action mode engages. So you can tell if the trigger is being pressed as the indicator protrudes, which is nice for EDC, and we'll get more on that later. Accompanied with a chamber indicator, the state of the A-Rex is easily read. Last but not least, despite the similarity in levers, the takedown on the A-Rex does not require the pull of a trigger. So if you don't like clearing your firearm before takedown, there's less likelihood that you'll shoot yourself, though I would steer you away from relying on it. So while I admire the Glock's simplicity and ease of use, the Delta takes it in the features category. Out of the box, the Glock is a relatively thrillless but uncompromised experience. The great ergonomics and substantial grip mean that recoil is manageable, though I do wish for more aggressive stippling. The sights are fantastic, they're very easy and very fast to acquire, despite my preference to blacked out rear setups. For me, the trigger leaves much to be desired both in reset and communication as you pull towards the brake, especially for the gun's reputation and slogan of perfection, but it's a very smooth trigger nonetheless. As I mentioned earlier, the A-Rex is a much stiffer, less ready gun out of the box. I would set aside time to break it in before you expect it to perform on par with a Glock, mainly with the mag release, but after that period, it's no slouch. The grip texture, being more aggressive, is more effective than the Glock, which provides a solid grip despite being noticeably thinner. Sights are simple and effective and flow well into the snag-resistant design of the gun. The Delta's trigger isn't as smooth, but it breaks lighter and cleaner than the Glock, with a noticeable and defined wall and a much shorter reset. From a draw using the same holster, I performed better and more consistent with the A-Rex. The grip texture led to a more solid and confident grip for more consistent follow-up shots, the trigger was more communicative, and I was more accurate despite the Glock having better sights in my opinion. So this is a win for the Delta. Now Glock guys, I know that it seems like things aren't going well, but I promise you there's some good news coming your way very soon. I carried both the Glock and the A-Rex on and off in various scenarios, and comfort-wise, the A-Rex had a slight advantage with its slimmer frame, but a lot of this can come down to holster selection. Safety-wise, the striker indicator on the back of the A-Rex adds confidence because you can holster the gun and keep your thumb on the indicator and feel if the trigger is catching. Despite this and the weight advantage of the A-Rex, I'm gonna call this one a draw because the Glock has such an extensive holster selection and because for me, they didn't feel all that different when you're moving around. So it's a draw. Unfortunately for the Glock, the A-Rex's trump card is in the final category. Cost. Hold up, what about all that hope you just gave those Glock fanboys a minute ago with that, that rallying speech hold fast? Well, I said that so that they would keep watching. They're just gonna be, they're gonna be devastated. No, they're gonna be mad. They're gonna be very mad. Duh. A Gen 5 Glock 19 will set you back on average about $550, but the optic ready MOS version that we have here is extra, usually about $70 more. Add to that, plates are sold separately, and though not exorbitant, $20 for a set, brings the premium up almost $100 over the standard 19. And that $100 premium is already $100 over the $450 average you'd pay for the Delta, which includes all the adapter plates you need, and sales regularly dip it to a flat $400 or even below. And make no mistake, the Delta is not a budget gun. They feel very well made, they have a tight fit and finish, and they've proven to be very reliable. So this is a clear win for the Delta. Conclusion and final tally, taking three out of five points with a tie in the EDC category, and that was me being pretty generous to the Glock based on the merit of its aftermarket community, the A-Rex Delta M is the winner. Now, don't shoot. I don't think Glocks are bad guns, by no means. I have a lot of respect for the brand, but I would love to see them push further with innovation. Their slow, almost reluctant pace of change is both a strength and a weakness. There's a ton of familiarity and cross-compatibility between old and new models, but it almost seems to have crippled their ability to innovate further. The Delta, on the other hand, is the new kid on the block and has everything to prove, so they've come ready to impress with every trick that they can throw at you and for a lot less money. 
I really hope that Delta catches on more because I think it's a great platform worthy of more attention. The lacking aftermarket community is definitely a damaging factor, and there's a bit of irony in the solution. Aftermarket parts won't become available until investors see a financial opportunity there, and those opportunities are tied to more people owning a gun and creating that demand. I believe that's what you call a catch-22. That one, okay. I'm worn out. Now the Glock isn't going anywhere, and if you're a fan, you've probably disregarded everything I've said violently. And it's that loyalty that makes new models and new manufacturers enter the fray because they want their shot at the title, their time in the sun, or at least a slice of it. Thanks for watching. If you like this style of video, stay tuned to TGC and check out my channel, 12 Spies, for more forgettable jokes and lengthy exposition. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Glock and Spiel Delight, welcome to the show. Yeah, I was just doing some Glock fire drills with my Glock. And you know, it really irks me that someone would get a Glockish gun that's not a Glock. It's enough that people make non Glock factory mags. But this is just blasphemous at this point. Like, what in the Glock? There's a lot of lost people out there. What can I say? That's why the fight, that's why this show is so important. Damn, it's just. I just get so Glock damn mad sometimes. Well, let's not use our Lord's name in vain here. Uh, next caller. Well, I sure hope you have plans to change the channel name again, because you're screwed after this. I love my local police and all, but I saw an officer with an M&P the other day, and I, and I just gotta say, f*** any cop that carries a Smith & Weston. They could go to hell. They could go straight to the pits of hell. Oh, okay, you okay sit down. I mean, I feel you, I feel you, but we, we gotta keep this show moving. Next caller.